guys, I hope you're all doing well, and welcome to the showdown between the Chaos Dwarves and Beastmen. It's going to be myself with the Sorcerer Prophet on foot, actually, trying a much wider Chorf army. Facing off against Ubatai, who's going to be rocking the Bray Shaman on the chariot, looking to run around, cackle, and uh, hopefully dodge Death Freak Rockets. Now, as far as my build goes in the front, it is going to be Goblin Laborers taking the initial beating and charges backed up by Chaos Dwarf Warriors because you still need capture weight. I do think that Chaos Dwarf Warriors are overcosted. You could reduce their gold probably by 50 and they'd be in a little bit of a better spot. I do also think that the Hobgoblin Cutthroats are way too expensive. Like both Hobgoblin variants could probably use a 50 gold reduction. And then I think that would be a nice step for the Chaos Dwarves. But nonetheless, normally you do see the big monsters, but I just like find that the playstyle of going like very narrow with a lot of artillery gives up too much agency on the battlefield. So lately I've been experimenting with like wide chorfs and using like cheap foot characters or like Astrogoth. And what's cool about the Sorcerer Prophet on foot we have Burning Head in this case, right? Is there's a really cool power combo. It's like one shot, a lot of infantry. You can use Burning Head and then you, firstly you cast a Vial of Hashet on them, which lowers their armor and gives them fire weakness. And then you Burning Head that target. So you can like one shot a Zangor unit. It's pretty cool. And a lot of other armored infantry can get caught off guard as well. On top of that, we got some Skirmishers and these guys are solid against Beastmen. Um, they can shoot a lot against Centigor, Centigors, Minotaurs, Razorgors, and uh, can give you some objective capture weight. They have four apiece, right? So you can maneuver to the other side and threaten things and use them as a screen if you have to because they're not awful in combat. Like Oglacon's boys, they have 34 and 34 and 28 for their stats and the other ones do have 24 weapons rank too. So the last addition here is going to be one of my favorite units in the roster, which is the Demon's Tongue. Uh, the Demon's Tongue is an absolute terminator against lightly armored troopers. Terror Route, it has a flamethrower, leadership discouraging effect. Its chariot also does a lot of damage. It's very, very underrated, I think. For Subutai's army on the other side, the beautiful Ungor Raiders, they are the core of the Beastman army, and I do think one of the best units. Uh, they can kill a lot of my big targets, like even Ungor Raider Fire can wear down, let's say, Kidai Fireborn. Uh, they can wear down the uh, my version of Centaurs, the Bull Central Renders, which are really, really expensive. And uh, yeah, even the big monsters can get taken down by Raider Spam as well. We got Ungors into the sunset, Gorbold to try and stop trains, which certainly makes sense. Centigor pressure, more Minotaurs in the back, Minotaurs with uh, the dual weapons, it would appear, because they do well enough against big targets in this matchup and can also massacre my Chorf infantry, so I don't hate it. Now, the only risky thing is, is that my opponent is on a chariot here, so Death Reek rocket launcher can do a lot of work. So one of our first Collins is going to be a Death Reek, and with wide Chorfs, you're way better at defending your artillery, right? If somebody rushes back here, I have all these like skirmish cabs, a screen, and I can call out my own Hobgoblins and uh, also Bull Central renders if need be. So we did get a little bit of flamethrower action. The old uh, Demon's Tongue did move in and took a pot shot at those Ungor Raiders. And now my cavalry, I hesitate to call them cavalry, my skirmishers maneuvering about, but the Gorbel running up, cackling, eating some shots to the face. The Gorbel is kind of acting like a middle linebacker in football and just mirroring the running back here, which is my Demon's Tongue. As the first rocket's going to be sailing downtown, and man, that thing's got some altitude. Look at that. Here it comes, and boom, headshot there. So it did some good value. First Burning Head going to be going down, and Burning Head is so good because Ungo Raiders are just so prevalent in pretty much every matchup. So the Burning Head goes through those Raiders, and then it's going to be coming across and actually catching these guys too. It's like, give me the, give me them stakes. So it does get in, it roasts those Ungors, and that was a super good Burning Head. I was very happy. It even kind of catches that third one. Oh my god, the gods here Burning Head. So now what we're going to be doing is using the Death Freak Rocket Launcher to go after the Gorbel here. While the two armies prepare to collide, we're going to be calling the train in. And you'll see the train here is going to shoot its uh, flamethrower as soon as it gets uh, sight here. It should. And there it goes. And look at that damage. That thing is so solid. And it's going to terror out them because it gives negative eight leadership. It moves in, does damage, and terror outs that unit. I mean, buckling a position like that that quickly is so cost effective. Here you also see the Gorbel getting hammered a little bit. And in the back, the uh, Hobo Goblin Raiders just kind of peppering away, looking for Minotaurs to shoot at while my Chorf lines do start to move up and put some pressure on. Granted, the Chorfs are going to get pounded pretty hard here by the Minotaurs, but at least we have some tools to punish them, right? So the Chorf Warriors uh, do take a beating for Hashet, but uh, they're not doing it for free. So here we got the Hobo Goblin shooting away. Minotaurs rushing into the backfield, trying to get on top of my archers, which I'm okay with. I can just kite backwards. And we do also call in a relatively hard counter as well. Full Centaur renders with Great Opens will, will pretty much dominate basic Minotaurs. Great Open Minotaurs would be a bit of a harder fight for them. I think they would barely win. But, um, you know, in terms of cost effectiveness, the Minotaurs with Great Opens are more cost effective. They're like 300 gold cheaper. But, um, yeah, in this case, they will be able to chase down the Butchers. And uh, that Gorbel has been getting punished. That Death Freak Rocket Launcher has been just nailing him all day. You can see he's having to spend a lot of time standing up, which is, uh, you know, a loss of DPS, right? Here we get the old Minotaurs. I put the Vial of Hashet on them to make them weak to fire damage. And they're also flammable from the Oglacons boys. And these guys all do fire damage. So all of my archers here are getting a 40% damage buff, which is super good in tandem with putting them down to very low armor. This was a misclick here. I did cast the Burning Head at a really haggard angle. I meant to cast it down the line here, which would have been super good. But it does sometimes happen when you're you know trying to click on things really quickly. 
Demon Stung rolls in, though. Does get knocked by old Gorbel, but I'm hoping it'll keep moving through and tear routing and using its flamethrower. And you see, ever since CA did fix the trains to like shoot properly when they're in combat, they become absolute lawnmowers. Gorbel getting nailed in the face once again. As our flank does get collapsed here, the goblin labor is getting melted. Uh, in the backfield, we do call in some hobgoblins with spears, which trade pretty well into centigors. And a head-up fight, centigors would win. But if the centigors are at all compromised, have taken some damage, it actually becomes a fight that hobo goblins can win. And they're 200 gold cheaper, so that's really, really good. 150 gold, is it? Yeah, 200, 150 gold, something like that. Looks like Traderkin going down there. Going to be nailing my Sorcerer Prophet and one of my Chore Warriors and misses the train, thankfully for me. Currently, the Beastmen do have a double cap, but I have a massive value lead. There's a little bit of healing on the Beastmen roster, but not too much. Here in the backfield, Centigors do get taken down by the Hobo Goblin Riders, and uh, our Skirmish Cavalry continue to maneuver, trying to put some firepower here on the Minotaur, some fire damage on Butchers, which, of course, I uh, love it since they are weak to fire. And the Gorbel has been getting trash canned by that Death Freak. And, you know, if I had gone more Elite Chorfs with, like, the Sorcerer Prophet on the Bale Taurus, I probably wouldn't have the bandwidth to protect the Death Freak Rocket Launcher right now. But now there's not a whole lot the Beastmen can do to get in my backfield cleanly because with the Skirmish Cavalry poking anything that goes back there and the perpetual threat of the uh, Hobgoblin Cavalry coming in, right? So Objective 1 does go into our favor. And here the uh, Bull in the back, the Gorbel at 1 HP, so he's pretty much down for the count. But the Chorf Infantry are holding pretty firm up on the objective. As in the backfield, Hobgoblin Spear Riders chasing down the Minotaurs. More Minotaurs on the way in. But, you know, Chorf tro Warriors are somewhat stalwart, if not overcosted, like I said. And now we're going to be maneuvering over towards objective number two while also pressuring objective three. So Cutthroat's moving up. And uh, a Cutthroat will definitely dominate an Ungor Spearman in combat. I mean, their, their strength is 34 and their combat stats aren't bad. But um, we'll have to see how that one turns out over the course of the long run here. In the backfield, the Beastmen tried to move in, but I did call back my Demon's Tongue to route off those Spearmen. Wanted to make sure they didn't find their way back to my death reek and shut that thing down. And now we're going to be calling it a second artillery piece, which is going to be a skullcracker. Skullcrackers are very good. The flamethrower one is the best, hands down, in my opinion. But this thing, I think, in this matchup, you probably want to run two trains of any variant. But the, the best combination, in my opinion, is going to be the uh, demon's tongue as well as a skullcracker. So on the objective here, we do see the cows moving in. And the chorf infantry going to probably be falling here relatively soon. We do have some burning heads in the back pocket. And hopefully the flamethrower train will be able to melt these guys. Let's actually watch this for a second and see what kind of work we get in here. And here it comes. Burning head. I did see Centigors move again, so I tried to get that. And that is going to tank the leadership of all these Beastmen units. And then terror routes are very much going to be on the table. But here comes the train. Uh, it's flamethrower attack shooting in melee a little bit. And uh, not bad at all. Yeah, also going to be tanking the leadership of any of those advancing Centigors. Well, the Chorf Warriors move up. And here Hobgoblins moving into combat against Raiders, shutting them down. And on the middle... It's looking very good for us. Turf Warriors do manage to make it there, and the Bull Centaur Renders did manage to catch the Butchers of Kalkengard and, and basically had defeated them in combat one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, but the Butchers were softened up, thankfully. They might have actually found a way to win if they weren't already a little bit damaged, but very scary stuff. So Objective 1 is going to be ours. Big Terror Route coming down. We get the Skullcracker and the Iron Demon together, so they're able to roll those guys up. And Sorcerer Prophet hustling towards Objective 1 here. Meanwhile, on Objective 2, our Hobgoblins still poking away at Minotaurs. I would imagine each of them has probably accrued seven or 800 value would be my guess. On the side point, obviously my Cutthroats got massacred by Minotaurs. Doesn't take much uh, much uh, knowledge to know that's going to happen. But honestly, at this point, we just have such a massive value lead that the Beastmen are really just running out of steam. And this game is essentially, in my opinion, over here. Uh, the trains are just going to roll from point to point and really hammer things down. The Beastmen can scrap a little bit, but they still need a lot of points to win. And a 6,000 value lead is just too much to come back from. GG well played. And, you know, that's cool because Beastmen are a very meta top tier faction. And the fact that Chorfs can compete, you know, Subutai and I did talk about it after the game. And we both felt that uh, maybe it wasn't the most optimal Beastmen build, perhaps. And also, um, you know, maybe he engaged too heavily on my terms and should have been more rotating on the other two points and forcing me to overextend, which I think were very valid points. But it's cool to see that the Chorfs can at least like go fisticuffs with Beastmen, considering they're like one of the weakest factions in the game, according to the stats right now. The infantry definitely don't perform, but the uh, Raiders, yeah, 800, 600, 600, great. The train, 2300. Terror routes were super solid. Character was nice with burning heads, and uh, the Death Reek Rocket Launcher was also an MVP. It got 1800 value. It killed the Gorbel and also punished his Lord, chasing it off. I didn't quite show you guys that, but yeah, I was happy with the combined arms there and how it worked. And it didn't feel like a... Like, the thing about Chorfs is it always kind of, it used to feel like when they win, it was just because of cheese, whether it be mass trains or, um, you know, mass artillery, very skewed. But it's cool to see, like, a wide, standard, kind of normal Chorf build actually perform and, uh, and you know, execute a game plan. Um, I think trains are in a decent place. They're still hard to deal with for some factions, but they're 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 reasonably balanced now for sure. And, you know, the, the flamethrower train is not cheap. It's very expensive. So, um, so yeah, fun stuff. GG well played. Kind of curious how Zangors would do there. Um, they would obviously last longer, but his army would have been much more narrow with Zangors. 
uh, you know, affording things like Gorbel. And if you go too hard on Zangors, I suppose the trains could really punish you. So I, I can see the direction. Ace of Gorse Minotaur is, of course, very good. All right, guys, GG, well played. We'll see you on the other side. Take care of yourselves. And that is going to be it for today.